Now, I need you to stay with me this morning and follow along as you probably have never and maybe never hear again a sermon on the subject that I'm going to deal with this morning. Yet the Bible mentions it 80 times. Something the Bible mentions 80 times and it's a part of everybody in here's life. I guess. I'm assuming everybody in here dreams. Genesis 37. And I want you to look at a verse of scripture here that they, Joseph's brothers was talking about here. And uh, look at verse number 19. Genesis 37, 19. And they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Joseph had had a dream and his brothers didn't like what he had dreamed. And you know the story there as it unfolds. We'll mention more about that in a minute. Now, I want to preach this morning on dreams. I need your attention. If everybody will give me very close attention, we'll cover this subject. And as always, the Bible is the final authority on this subject or any other. I've looked at some books that they put out on dreams and I, there's a lot of stuff on the internet. I didn't look at any of that except one, one page and I didn't even look it up. Time, time to even mess with all the crazy things that people are saying. There's commercials on TV. There's books, astrologers and pros, prognosticators and palm readers are putting out about dreams and what they mean and what they represent and everything. I'm going to give you the Bible believer's view of it. And the Christian view. And of course, the right view. What are dreams? Where do they come from? Do they mean something? Do you dream in color? What does it mean when you have a dream? I've met very few people who say they never dream. I'm going to ask a question of this congregation this morning. How many of you at least on a regular basis dream at night? Would you raise your hand please? Okay, that's, that's 90, 98% probably. There are probably two or three folks that, that never dream. Now, I want to say a couple of things about it by way of introduction. And then I'm going to give you a Bible outline. So you, you'll never get this probably nowhere else. So get it good this morning. Uh, a dream, they say, scientifically, definition is R-E-M. You know, the old rock group by that name. R-E-M stands for rapid eye movement. And what happens, there's a certain stage you get in in sleep that's called R-E-M. And so when that happens, you, you begin to have, just like you're awake, vivid images in your brain, and we call that a dream. I did look at uh, the way that... Um, I guess, I guess professionals in, interpret dreams. I've always had a, a thing where I interpret people's dreams. I don't know if they're right or not, but I've, I've always done it. People used to have dreams. They'd say, Brother Danny, what do you think my dream means? And uh, some of them don't mean nothing, as I'll, I'll mention to you in a minute. But uh, I, I've always had this thing of uh, the Lord, I felt like, let me see dreams and hear people's dreams. And so I'm going to tell you what they say, and then I'm going to tell you what I say. To, by way of introduction. I read in this book where professionally, they believe if you dream, you are jumping. You are jumping. Uh, that you are trying to overcome obstacles in your life or business or whatever like that. My interpretation is, you've been on a trampoline that evening. They believe, they believe that uh, if you... Uh, are in the jungle. They think if you believe you're in the jungle, that you are drink. You're, it's your untamed primitive instincts. I, my interpretation is you watch the Tarzan movie or something. They believe that if you are on a ladder, they believe that professionals teach that if you are climbing a ladder, you are a progressive achiever in life. My interpretation is you've probably been painting your house or something and uh, that has stayed in your mind. They believe that, uh, if, you, they believe that if you tie, untie a knot in your dream, that you're messing with something and you're un trying to untie this knot, that it means that you are untangling the problems and deciphering problems in your life. My interpretation of that is you're a nut. Uh, they believe 
that uh, if you they believe you dream about kissing, that you are things you dreaming about things that you hold dear. My interpretation is you've probably been watching too many soap operas on TV. Uh, they believe that if you dream about killing somebody, that you have hatred in your heart. Amen. I agree with that one. That's probably right. They believe that if you dream of a flood, that if you dream about a flood, that there's some misfortune getting ready to take place in your life. My interpretation is you probably need to get up and go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. They believe that if you, they believe that if you dream about owls, they, in this book, they said if you dream about owls, that an accident, you could be getting ready to have an accident in your life. I believe there's demons outside your house. Or you, it could be a UFO in your backyard. Now that's what them things represent. Demon powers. Owls do. They believe that if you believe in, that you dream about breaking the ice, if you, if you dream about breaking ice, you will soon be moving. My interpretation, your, your, your feet are sticking out from under the cover and, and you're freezing to death, so cover them up. But anyway, with that in mind this morning, my, my interpretation is a lot more practical uh, of dreams. I want to tell you this. What makes a person dream? Where do dreams come from? There are three sources of dreams. Number one, God. It is a proven fact that in the Bible, God gave certain people certain dreams. He said in Numbers chapter 12 and verse 6, He said, I will speak to him in a dream. So God definitely gave and gives some dream. The second uh, uh, place dreams come from is you. You. The Bible said in Ecclesiastes 5, 3, through a dream cometh through a multitude of business. You get so much on your mind, a business, you get so much, everything just cramped, all your bills and all your responsibilities and your family and your friends. You'll go to sleep and you'll just, I mean, that's where a lot of dreams come from. Uh, they come from responsibility. Uh, or eating pizza right before you go to bed. Or tacos. Or, or you know, you cram, I mean, you'll have, you'll have nightmares. Somebody said, instead of griping about why your dreams don't come true, thank God your nightmares don't. <laughs> Ain't that right? Uh, and the third place dreams come from is the devil. And that's in Jeremiah 27, 9. And it talks about uh, those false dreams that come and, uh, and they're inspired by wicked thoughts and things like that. So with that in mind, I'm going to give you an outline on what the Bible says about dreams. Number one, I'm going to talk about famous dreams. Number two, foolish dreams. Number three, false dreams. Number four, filthy dreams. Number five, fatal dreams. You listen this morning and you'll hear these thoughts. Number one, famous dreams. Let me give you famous dreams right out of the Bible. There's Genesis 20 and verse 3 where the Bible told Abimelech that he was a dead man in a dream. Abimelech had Abraham's wife, Sarah, had another man's wife and God come to him in a dream and he said, buddy, you might as well be dead. I'm going to kill you for what you're doing. That ought to be a warning to a lot of folks. Amen. God spoke to that man and that got put in the Bible as a famous dream. Then there's Genesis 28, 12, if you're taking notes. That's the dream of Jacob's ladder. That's a great famous dream. Old Jacob laid down and used a rock for his pillow and he dreamed he saw a ladder set up to heaven. If you have a rock for your pillow, there ain't no telling what you're going to dream about. That's in Genesis 28 and verse 12. In Genesis 37 and verse 5. Joseph dreamed and told it to his brother. Joseph's famous dream. The reason God spoke to them through dreams back then so much, they didn't have a Bible. And so God spoke to them guys and Joseph saw the sun and the moon and the 11 chiefs bowed down to his. That was a picture of all the tribes of Israel bowing down to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's a very famous dream. Then there's Genesis 41 verse 1. Pharaoh, his corn stalks. You remember old Pharaoh? He grew them, them big corn stalks, them little corn stalks, and them fat cows, them skinny cows. And it represented seven years of plenty and seven years of famine on the earth. And then there's Genesis 40 and verse 5. The butler and the baker. You remember them guys? They both had dreams. They, and, and the butler and the baker. And the butler dreamed there was birds picking cherries off his head or something like that. And they, and they said, well, Pharaoh's going to raise your head up out of prison. The other guy's going to get his head cut off. 
God. And those were famous dreams in the Bible uh, that came true. Daniel 2 and verse 45. Daniel's great dream of the stone cut out without hands and it smashed all the other kingdoms and that represented the millennial kingdom of Christ one day taking over this world. And in Genesis, uh, I'm sorry, uh, 1 Kings 3 and verse 5, God came to Solomon and he saw in a dream and he said, Ask what I want, you, what you want me to do, and I'll do it. Boy, that'd be a good one to have, wouldn't it? God come to him in a dream, said, "Whatever you want, Solomon, that will I do for you." And then in Matthew chapter one and verse twenty, the angel came to Joseph in a dream when he when he was when he thought Mary had messed up and he's going to get rid of her. And the angel came and he said, "Fear not." to take Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. That's a very, very famous dream. You hear it every, every Christmas season. And, and then, of course, there's Matthew 27, 19, when Pilate's wife, when they were wanting to crucify Jesus, Pilate's wife came to Pilate and said, look, look, look don't, don't, don't have nothing to do with that man. I've suffered many things today in a dream because of him. I've heard people say, well, what if somebody comes to you and they say, I had a bad dream about you. Don't do this. Don't. There's a case of it. I don't usually pay no attention to it when people tell me. People tell me they have bad dreams about me all the time. Uh, uh, and uh, I think, Lord, have mercy. What's going to happen? But there's a case where she was right and he should have listened to her, but he didn't. I remember, I remember one time, I dream, I'll tell you one of mine as I, I consider one of the dreams of all time that I've had. When I first started preaching, I was 19 years old. Now, I live up in the Hoppy Tom Holler up there in Nebo. And uh, I dreamed right when I started preaching that I was walking down my road, Hoppy Tom Road. I was about eight tenths of the way to the end of the road. It's nine tenths of a mile from my driveway to the end of the road. I, I, that, that's where I run there, there and back my, uh, all this week and I run there and back. It's almost two miles to the end of the road and back. Well, I dreamed that I was uh, walking down the road and I was walking down the road like this, just minding my own business and for some reason, I dreamed I looked down and there was a snake right beside me. It was only about that big around but that snake's head was at least as far as I'm here to the sign out yonder in front of me. Now I look back and its tail was also about that far behind me. And I, I said, that is the longest snake I've ever seen in my life. It looked like a, a quarter of a mile from the end to end. And I looked and his head was way up there at the end of my road. And I was just walking and he was crawling. And I looked down at him like that. I wasn't bothering him. He wasn't bothering me. We are just walking. And I stopped in my dream. And I stopped and I reached in my pocket and I pulled out one of them little uh, box cutters, you know, where you flip up like that and it's got a razor blade on it. And I remember flipping my thumb up like that right there. And I, in my dream, I just stopped and I bent over and I cut that snake's body. And when I cut his body, I looked and I saw his head raise up like that and turn around and look at me like that. And it was way up there. And that thing started coming at me. He was out off the ground. His body was on the ground. But his head like that, he started coming at me like 35 miles an hour. And he was coming right toward my chest. And right when he got to me, I jumped out of the way like that. And he went way down that way. And he turned around down here and started coming back. And when he got right to me, I jumped out of the way. And he went way down that way. And my dream ended with me jumping out of the way, out of the way of that snake. And I woke up the next day and I thought, oh Lord. I mean, it was one of them. Most, a lot of times you wake up and you don't remember what you dream. Buddy, I could remember every detail of that still to this day. And it's been 85 years. And, and, and I remember, I remember that I was sitting there that day and I woke up and I thought the Lord is like, it was like, I'm not saying it, but it was like the Lord said, you see there, Danny? He said, for all these 18 years of your life, I tell you, I was walking side by side with the devil. He wasn't bothering me and I wasn't bothering him. And I stopped when I was 18 and brother, I, you know what I'd done? I, I got, when I was 19, I reached and pulled out a sharp two-edged sword. And it's the sharpest book that's ever been in a cuts going and coming. And I took that thing out and went, 
Ah, and I stuck him with it. And brother, he's been after me ever since. It's been back and forth, dodging up, down. Uh, I mean, he's been after me ever since. Those, those are dreams that stick with you. And it was like God was showing me that. And I'm those famous dreams. Sometimes you dream stuff that, that's, that's like that that sticks with you. And I want to say secondly this morning, let's look at foolish dreams. Sometimes your dreams are just foolish. They come from a multitude of business. I've had people say, oh my goodness, I dreamed this. Do you believe I, do you believe I shouldn't go to work today? No, no, you ought to get up and go to work. Don't use that dream for an excuse. Uh, uh, you'll be all right. You're just hoping it'd be bad weather or something. Uh, but they're foolish dreams. In Job chapter 33 and verse 15, you know what he said? He said, the vision of the night when deep sleep falleth upon a man. You know what the Bible said? Uh, uh, you, you dream some crazy. One time, I was, one time I dreamed that I was up in the woods and uh, I dreamed that there was this horse chasing me. This is crazy. And I, that's a foolish dream. And this fo- horse was real fast. And I was running. Has anybody ever dreamed this? I was running, but I couldn't run. It's like, you know, and you, and you, you want to just take off like that right there. But it's like your feet. Have you ever had a dream where something was chasing you and you, could, you couldn't move? That's awful. That's awful. Isn't it? And I was going through the woods like this. And I looked back and it was getting closer on me. And I, I thought, why can't I move no faster than this? That's a foolish dream. That never came true. It ain't yet. Uh, I, I hope and, and pray uh, that it don't. That's a foolish dream. Uh, have you ever dreamed... You don't have to raise your hand here. Uh, have you ever dreamed that you was uh, uh, in the lunchroom line at school or something, and somehow or another you went out that morning and forgot to put your shirt on? I see a lot of people. Yeah, like you were, <laughs> you're ashamed to admit that, ain't you? But you were, it's an awful feeling to dream that you're in a big crowd of people and you just got your underwear on or something like that. And you think, oh my God, oh my God. but you can't do nothing about it. Nod your head if you know what I'm talking about. Okay. About 200 people did it. It's like that. Uh, that's a weird thing. You, know, you say, what is that? I don't have a clue where that comes from. Subconsciously, you want to be a streaker. I don't know. I don't believe that. Subconsciously, maybe down deep inside, uh, you're, you're afraid. Maybe that's how you're going to appear at the judgment seat of Christ. I don't know. Naked and ashamed. Uh, but I'm going to tell you something, brother. Those are foolish dreams. I, I wouldn't worry about that. I, I've had people tell me all my life, now if you dream you fall off of a cliff, and if you ever hit the bottom, you'll die. I don't know if that's true or not. I have drove, I have drove my car. One time, I, I dreamed I drove my car, and I went off a cliff, and I was falling, 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 and I woke up. I never hit the bottom. And a man said, well, I don't know if you, if you, if you hit the bottom are, are you dead or what? But I don't believe it. Do you, let me, you ever died in your dream? Have you ever died in your dream? It, it does happen. People dream that they die. That'd be awful, wouldn't it? And you're out of the body uh, looking at yourself. Have a, a weird, listen, I, I'll tell you something. Have you ever dreamed you was dreaming? I did that one time. In my dream, I dreamed. That's a weird, that's, a, <laughs> that's crazy. I, I'm telling you, you know what will make you dream more than anything? I ain't the Lord or the devil. It's sleep medicine. You take that stuff to make you sleep, you'll have nightmares all night long. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's foolish dream. But let me move on quickly this morning. Oh, I did dream I shot the president one time. And, it, and it, I was going to shoot him, or I had shot, not, not Obama. I don't want the FBI in here this morning. Uh, uh, we don't even have freedom of speech anymore. But I, it, was, it was George Bush or somebody, and I didn't have no problem with him. But I dreamed I tried to kill him or shot, shot at the president. And I dreamed him, I dreamed they was coming to get me and going to put me in prison. I thought, oh my goodness, this is awful. This is awful. And I woke up and thought, Woo, thank God I didn't do that. Have you ever dreamed like that? And you, and you woke up and said, Thank God it's not true. I'm not in jail. I'm not going, I'm not dying. Boy, those are foolish dreams. Let me say something about false dreams. In Jeremiah 23 and verse 32, the Bible talks about the dreams. And, and did you know in Deuteronomy 13, 1, he said, If a man has a dream and that man tells you about a dream and it's not according to that word, he said he's a false prophet. Ignore him. It's a false dream. Dream. I'm going to tell you something, and all you religious people that hear this on the internet and YouTube and on the radio, thousands and thousands of people, if, if, if your dream is against this book, God did not give you that dream. 
God's not telling you to do nothing that's against or above, above or beyond what the Bible says. Amen? Never has, never will. God will. I heard a preacher on the radio or on TV one time. He said, God will lead you beyond the Bible. He will not do it. God will keep you in the confines of that book right there. There is no added revelation, extra biblical revelation. God will never lead you beyond what this book says. False dreams. You ever, uh, one of my daughters that's here, here this morning, I won't say which, she always believed. If you, if you, I used to pray with them at night and said, Lord, don't let them have no bad dreams. And she sleeps with a Bible under her pillow. You ever heard that? That's a little bit superstitious, but ain't nothing wrong with it. And uh, she might still do it. I don't know. She still did that? You don't? Uh, she got a gun under it now. Uh, <laughs> she used to keep a Bible in the middle and she used to keep a Bible under her pillow and a gun too. And that way the Bible would keep the demons away and the gun would keep the crooks away. <laughs> I, don't, I don't disagree with that. That's a pretty good philosophy. Uh, but, but anyway, uh, the, uh, the, there's a false dream. But I want to hurriedly say this morning uh, about filthy dreams. The Bible said in Jude, only one chapter, verse 8, Likewise, these filthy dreamers defile the flesh. Now, you don't need to raise your hand or anything like that, but I had a lot of people tell me, they said, Brother Danny, I just have the most wicked, filthy, ungodly stuff happen in my dreams. What do I do about it? Well, there is some things you can do about it. One is you plead the blood of Jesus. The other is keep your mind and heart clean by reading that book. And the other is quit watching filthy stuff on TV or the internet and you might dream some clean dreams. Amen? The reason you dream filthy dreams is because that filth gets down inside. You say, well, I've been living right and doing the best I can and I have this old dirty dream out of the middle of nowhere. Where'd that go? I don't know about all that. I don't know. Maybe it's something back in your past somewhere. But it's got to get in you somehow, somewhere. Back in. And the best thing to do is don't read filth. Don't watch filth. If you're looking at dirty pictures, get rid of them. If you got dirty magazines, get rid of them. Young people, you don't have to see every filthy thing on the internet. You don't have, it'll get in your mind and what you think Think about, you'll wind up doing for it's over with. Clean up your TV habits. Clean up your internet. If you can't keep the filth off your internet, get rid of it or put some kind of filter or do something, but leave that stuff alone. You won't dream filthy dreams. Amen. I knew a, guy, I knew a, a man that his wife had a dream about their pastor and she woke up and told him and he made them quit church. And I made a, I, I knew, I know was ready to fight somebody because of something happened in his dream. That she, he dreamed about somebody else's wife or something like that. Listen, what, you let yourself think about something too much. Think about dream coming through a multitude of business. Now sometimes you can be praying and be as right. You ought to see the looks on people's faces in here, y'all. Some of y'all as white as a ghost. You're sitting there looking like, what's he going to say next? Oh my goodness, I can't. Well, the Bible says in Jude verse 8, filthy dreamers defile the flesh. I'm not coming down on you. I'm not being judgmental. I'm not being harsh. I'm just saying, clean up your habits and your dreams might not be so dirty. And if you got clean habits and doing right and you still have one, I don't reckon ain't nothing you can do about it. But the more you do right and serve God, the less you're going to have in dirty dreams. Amen. <laughs> Many, young and old, have a problem with that. People say, you believe them dreams come from God? You know some of them don't. Ain't that right? But let me say, Number five, quickly this morning, I want to talk about fatal dreams. There were people in the Bible who dreamed that the handwriting was on the wall and it was going to die, and it happened. Now, I don't believe you ought to get all scary and stuff, and oh my goodness, I had a bad dream, so I'm not going to, don't, I don't, if I've got plans to go somewhere on a trip or something, and I have a bad dream about that trip, I ignore it. You can't, you can't trust everything you dream as being gospel truth. Amen. Lady stood right here in church one Sunday morning, out there on the, on the, in, in front of the church, and she, she stood there and she said, she said, brother, she was crying. She said, brother Danny, she said, I'm, she was supposed to went to work that evening, and she said, I'm afraid to go to work. 
She said, I don't think I should go to work today. I said, why? She said, I just have this feeling. I just have this bad feeling. I just have this bad feeling. Something awful is going to happen if I go to work. And I, and I said, I, I wouldn't worry about it. She said, but I've got this terrible feeling. I shouldn't go to work. I know I shouldn't. Something awful is going to happen. You said, what did you tell her, brother? I said, I told her to go on to work like you're supposed to. The devil will jump on you and put junk like that in your head. And she did go on to work and nothing bad didn't happen. You can't, you, just because you have a, a weird feeling about something don't mean you're supposed to change your... You, now you say, well, what if God... Now if God's telling you not to do it, you better not do it. But just because you have a strange feeling come on. Can I say something to y'all this morning? You can't trust your feelings. Well, I just feel like this, and I just feel like that. I, yeah, yeah, a lot of people feel all kinds of things. When it comes right down to it, all you can go by is what you know to be right by that book right there, because you're liable to feel anything. You're liable to feel like, oh my goodness, I shouldn't go to church today because I'm afraid I'll have a wreck. I believe I'd go ahead and go, on, go to church and take a chance having a wreck. Amen. <laughs> That's right. The Lord take care of you. I mean, I've, I've got y'all thinking wheels are turning. You ought to see everybody sitting here. You're looking out. You're thinking 100 miles an hour and I'm spitting this out fast. But I'm talking about Nebuchadnezzar. Them guys in the Bible, they dream. Old Belshazzar, he saw that handwriting on the wall, that vision. People ask me the difference between a vision and a dream. And I think, biblically, you can ask these Bible scholars in here if you, if you want a good answer, but I think, I think, Biblically, the difference between a dream and a vision is usually a dream is when you're asleep and a vision, you can be awake. A lot of them guys were awake and saw visions. They saw stuff happen. As a matter of fact, one of them guys said, I saw a dream. Daniel said, I saw a dream. I didn't have a dream, I saw a dream. And it was like, he he would walk around all of a sudden, like Peter sitting up there on that top of that house that day. But he, he he wasn't asleep. I don't reckon, was he? Was he asleep? And he was sitting up there, and all of a sudden, heaven came, uh, came down. He was hungry. Have you ever been real hungry and dreamed about food? Now, I do that. When I'm fasting for the youth rally, I, in the middle of the night, man, I'm eating fried chicken, and, I'm just, and I wake up, and I think, Ugh! I'm starving! Lord, help me! How? I'm dreaming about food! I, I dream that, but that don't mean... That something bad's going to happen. Fatal dreams. I'll tell you this story. Now, one of the most terrible stories of fatal dreams I've ever heard. It has to do with an old atheist back 1800s by the name of Archibald Boyle. Archibald Boyle belonged to the Hell Club. They called it the Hell Club. They had meetings every year. And he was the president because he was the most blasphemous, wickedest, dirtiest, filthiest mouth one of them. And Archibald Boyle, they had their big annual meeting and he said they would all stand up and say who could tell the most blasphemous jokes against God and against the Bible and against Christians. And he would stand up in front of all these lady friends and the men, they would drink and they would cuss And he'd say, there ain't no God. And he would just blaspheme the name of God. That night, on the way home, Archibald Boyle went home and dreamed. And he dreamed that he was riding his horse that night home from the meeting. And he said, while he was riding his horse down that long, dark road, something came up beside him and seized the reins of that horse. A dark, mysterious character. And that horse started running and he said, stop, stop. And the guide said, I'm not stopping. You're going with me. And Archibald boy said, where are you taking me? He said, I'm taking you to hell. And he said, no, you're not. No, you're not. I'm not going. And he started trying to pull the reins on that horse, but the horse kept running faster. And finally the horse fell off a cliff and he felt himself going down, 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 down. And he said when he got down there, he could hear laughs and screams. And he said, he looked, and there was an old charred wall and he just fell like, like it was on pavement. And he could smell smoke. And he said, he looked around and he said, where am I? What is this place? 
And all of a sudden he looked and he saw who, what he called Mrs. D. And Mrs. D was one of his girlfriends that he, that he had on earth. And he, she was wild and he partied with her. And he said, oh, Mrs. D, you're here. This must be a delightful place. Show me the pleasures of hell. And she said, oh, it's wonderful here. It's wonderful here. And she started laughing. And he said when she started laughing, uh, he said uh, she pulled back her robe and her bosom, her whole body was nothing but snakes moving around like that, right? And she started laughing and went off in one of the caverns. He said another uh, uh, fiendish, demonic figure appeared and everybody had snakes just all all over them. By the way, if you dream about a bunch of snakes like that, uh, you, I, I'm, I'm telling you, there's something to it. I dreamed there's a snake that big that uh, come up through the sewer line in my yard and got in my bedroom and just a few weeks later, brother, there was ba- major trouble uh, happened to me. I don't know if I had anything to do with it or not. You dream about a big old pile of snakes in your living room or bedroom floor, man, you may have, you may get down to pray and plead the blood of Jesus. But anyway, he said he dreamed and he said all these people had snakes in inside him and he said they, they were all laughing at him and screaming and making fun of him and he said get me out of this place and finally he said I adjure thee by the living God get me out of here and his God laughed at him and he said you dare to take his name that you blasphemed all these years now you're calling on him he said alright I'll get you out But he said, in a year and a day, we'll meet to never separate again. And he woke up. And he woke up in his bed and he couldn't move. You ever had a dream where it's so real, when you woke up you could not. You could not move, you just laid there. And he said for days he wouldn't come out of the house. He wouldn't eat. He was, that's how real that going to hell was in his dream. He said he couldn't eat a bite and he couldn't sleep. And he laid there in his bed like that. And he, and he finally, finally got out and he quit joking around. He was real serious for a while. And a month went by and another month went by. And little by little, he lightened up just a little bit. But he never was his self again. It had such an effect on him. And he said the months were by and it was getting time for that yearly meeting again. And he said, I don't even want to go. And his friends said, oh, come on, come on. He said, man, I had this dream that bothered me. They said, that's stupid. Don't pay no attention to stuff like that. Come on. He said, I don't know. He said, he's nervous. He's really, really nervous about going to that meeting. And they said, come on, Mr. Ball. Come on, it's going to be fun. You're the president. Man, you're the life of the party. We count on you for the, the meanest, dirtiest joke. Come on. And they finally talked him into going. And they went. The story said they went to that meeting and he sat there and everybody was laughing and everybody done had him a drink and they was cussing and everybody was already the atmosphere was getting wicked and he said he sat there on pins and needles just scared to death. He couldn't even enjoy it. And cold chills shot down his body when the moderator got up. And he said, Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our annual meeting. This is Leap Year. So it's been a year and a day since we've met. And he said he sat there and nearly froze. All through the meeting, they laughed, they cussed, they blasphemed, and he tried to tell a joke or two, and it was just flat. No good. When that thing was over, he said, I'm tired of this. Got on his horse and left. And they said they saw him riding down the road. He was miserable. And the next morning, Somebody went out there and there they found his horse grazing on the grass on the side of the road. And in the ditch lay that stiff body of Archibald Ball. That mysterious guide had come to get him a year and a day and took him to hell. What you call that? Call that a fatal dream. I don't know how your dreams are and really that's not important this morning. What's important is God warns you through His Word over and over and over and over and over that the day's going to come when you're going to die. You hear me this morning? God warns you through that Bible that the day's going to come when you're going to die. 
And the question is, are you ready if He called you this morning? Let's stand by our head for prayer. Every head bowed. Every eye closed. Nobody's moving. You're here this morning, every head's bowed, and every eye's closed. If you're here this morning and you're not right with God, I wouldn't be in your shoes for all the money in this world. And I'm going to ask you this morning to get out of your seat. Come down here to this altar. Be a man about it. Be a woman. And say, Dear Lord, I'm ready to do right. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and save me this morning. I've been, maybe you've been saved. Say, preacher, I've been saved. But I sure ain't been living right. And I'm going to come to that altar this morning and I'm going to get my heart right and I'm going to rededicate my life. I wonder this morning, there'll be somebody here to say, preacher, would you pray for me? Would you just slip up your hand and take it right back down, raise it? God bless you. I see them back there. God bless you. Anybody else? Anybody else? Amen. God bless you. Hands all over the building. If you raised your hand on the very first verse of this song, be man enough or woman enough to get down here and get down on your knees and say, Lord, I'm going to leave here this morning right with God. I'm going to leave here right. Amen. Come on. Somebody come pray this young man. Others are coming. Others are coming. Let God speak to your heart. Father, do what ought to be done right now. I pray you'd save that one which is lost and encourage all the rest of us. Thank you for your word enlightening us on this subject this morning. We don't have to go by what astronomers say. We don't have to go by what psychics say or witches or palm readers. I'm glad we got a Bible that'll tell us what's right. Bless now this invitation. Help these that lifted their hands to make that step and come out and get right with you for Jesus' sake. In His name we pray. Amen. Let's sing. You come on right now. Come on right now. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Sing it now. Thou art the potter. I am the clay. Come on now, sing now. Mold me and make me sing after thy will. While I am waiting, say, yielding. Do you need to come? Come on, get out of your seat. Come on, right now, buddy. Come on, right now. Let the Lord help you this morning. Let the Lord help you this morning. Don't leave without God. Amen. That's right. Thank the Lord. Search me and try me, Master, today. Help me sing now. Water than snow. The Lord make you whiter than snow. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. As in thy presence, humbly I bow. Let's sing another verse, brother. One more. Sing. You need to come. Come on right now. You need to get saved. Come on, get saved right now. Get your heart right. Get your heart right before you leave this morning. And we. Help me, I pray. Power, all power. Surely, surely is thy. That's right. Thank the Lord. Touch me and heal me, Savior divine. Amen. These are still praying this morning. Is God dealing with your heart? Dream. 80 times in the Bible. You now know more about dreams than astronomers and witches. Them books they write are crazy. They'll try to tell you it's got something to do with your, your palm. and it's that, No, that's where you had a bicycle wreck. Listen, you take God's Word. It's the final authority in all matters of faith and practice. One person said, we preachers ain't got no business stepping over into our field. We, we can step anywhere that puts us. We can step anywhere the Bible says it. It, it's, it is our field. Amen? Amen. All right.
Okay, I'm 